okay, no guarantee the dog behind me is going to be quiet, but we're going to give this a shot. So the first thing we need to do when we're creating integration between Jira Data Center and GitHub Enterprise Cloud is we need an OAuth app. Now the Jira documentation will tell you to use an OAuth app that's tied to a user. I prefer to do it at the organization level. So here we are in my organization, DevOps Elvis. And if I go to settings, and I scroll down, and I go to developer settings, and I go to OAuth apps, this is where I can create a new OAuth application. So what I'll do is click register an application. And I need to give this application a name. And so we'll just call this Jira integration. Now you need to specify a homepage URL and a authorization callback URL. Now in this scenario, my data center is on prem. It's not available and it has, it's not externally available. So I can't webhook back into it. I can't access it directly from GitHub Enterprise Cloud. However, you still need to enter the base URL of your Jira instance in these two. So if we come back over here to my Jira instance and I go to settings system and let me authenticate. Then we can see that my base URL for this case is just localhost colon 8080. So we'll copy that. We'll come back over to my OAuth application. And we'll paste that in. And I'm going to click register application. Now this creates the application, but we're not quite done yet because we have, while we have a client ID, we also need a client secret. So I am going to click generate new client secret. And authenticate again. And you can see that it generates me a secret. Now, that secret's going to disappear as soon as I move off this page or do anything off of this page. So what I need to do is I'm going to copy that. So we'll click the little copy here. And then let's go open up some place to put it. Give me one second. That way I won't lose it. Everything's running slow on my system today. That's okay. All right, so we're going to need that client secret, and we're going to need this client ID. So I'm going to put those off somewhere safe where I can access them later. And yes, I'm going to rotate them before I put this video up. So with that client secret and with that client ID, I am now ready to go to the Jira side and start doing some things. So if we come back over to Jira, I need to go to the administration settings and I need to go to applications. Let's see if we can blow this up a little bit. And go to DVCS accounts. Now under DVCS accounts, I will click link an account. And this is where I could link to Bitbucket, I could link to GitLab. And I have two options for linking to GitHub. One is just GitHub and one says GitHub Enterprise. GitHub Enterprise is actually used for linking to GitHub Enterprise Server if you're running a server version of GitHub. So what we want instead is just GitHub because we're going to be linking to GitHub Cloud. So I like to call it the same thing as my organization. And then here you can see I need to give it a client ID. So I'll put the client ID in, and I need to give it. Come on, catch up with me. I need to give it the client secret. You'll notice I'm going to tell it to automatically add any new repositories I create to this. 
and I'm going to enable smart commits. And I will click add. Now the key here is you need to be logged in to GitHub in a separate tab before you click that add button because it's going to bring me over here to authorize stuff. All right, so all this looks great. So what I'm doing is just going to scroll to the bottom and I'm going to click authorize DevOps Elvis. And you'll notice it's going to redirect me back to my JIRA. At this point, it starts trying to sync the repositories over. So it's going to my organization and it's syncing over all the repositories from my DevOps Elvis organization. You'll also notice that it's trying to set up webhooks. Now, if my JIRA was externally accessible, I would be able to have webhooks in GitHub that when I do a push or I create a pull request, it triggers automatically over to JIRA to update the JIRA work item. And in that case, I would need secrets to be able to do that. However, because in this instance, my JIRA is not externally accessible, I don't get that option. So what's going to happen is the webhooks are going to fail. You can see as it's going through, the creation of the webhooks is going to fail. And it's going to make you think that because the webhooks failed, everything didn't work. But that's not the case. Even though the webhooks failed, the repositories were still synced over. And we can still use smart commits to be able to link commits and pull requests and branches to Jira work items. So we'll give this just a few more, min few more moments. I mean, you can see, couldn't create the webhooks. Looks like webhook status failed. However, if we select this DVCS account now, you can see that we synced over 72 repositories. So I'm going to go to, say, my shuttle repository. And you'll notice if I click this, this will just take me, if I right click on this and open a new tab, this takes me to the repository. So at this point, I have linked Jira and GitHub. So what does that get me? Well, that gets you the ability to use what's called smart commits. Now, what Jira is going to do by default is every 60 minutes, it's going to pull GitHub and pull over any changes and look for any smart commits that you've added and is going to then um, update Jira appropriately. You can also change that to be a smaller setting, but be careful because by changing that to be less than 60 minutes, you might run into API rate limits, so be careful. You can also run it the sync manually whenever you want to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to that My Shuttle app or that My Shuttle repository. Here we go. And let's go find our readme and let's make a change to the readme. Now, before I do that, let's go find a work item that we want to work with. So I've got a project in here called Scrum. And the project is called Scrum, and you'll notice that the um, top-level slug for it is also called Scrum. So let's go with Scrum 5. All right? So I want to create some changes in GitHub, and I want to tie that back to Jira to this Scrum 5 work item. So back over here in my shuttle... I can edit this and we'll just edit this and we'll say Jira changes. And I'm going to commit those changes. Now the way I tie this back to Jira is by in the commit message, I say slug dash and the Jira number. And then I can say, you know, updated readme. This is going to tie this commit back to Jira. I could also say create a new branch for this change. And in the branch name, I could put slug dash number and then maybe Mickey Jira branch. And by putting the slug dash number in the branch name, that's going to tie this branch back to Jira, back to that work item. Another option I have is if I go and create a pull request. If I have the slug in the pull request title, then it's going to tie the pull request back to 
that Jira work item as well. I'm going to say create pull request. Now, if I go back over to Jira, this thing has to run every 60 minutes in order for before it would update. So what I'm going to do is go to DVCS accounts. I'll go into this connection that I created. I will go to my shuttle and you'll notice there's a little click to sync repository button. And I'm just going to manually sync this repository. You can see it just finished syncing. And if we go now back to our projects and back to Scrum, and we go to Scrum 5, you can now see over here on the right-hand side, we have a commit that's been linked. We have a pull request that's been linked, and we have a branch. If we click the commit, it gives us details on the commit. We can see the files that were changed. I can click here and it will take me directly to that commit in GitHub. If I click branch, then I can see the, the different branches that were tied to this. In this case, I've only got one branch. I could click here to go to the branch or the repository. And I can even create pull requests from here if I want to, if there wasn't one already open. You can see that hasn't quite updated yet because here is the pull request that's open. It gives me a link to the pull request. And so if I go back over here to my pull request and I merge it, and then just for grins, Let's go back to our code and let's go back to our branch and let's make another change. Let's go down and edit the readme again. We're going to commit this change and again we will say we're going to tie this to that work item. on this branch and let's go to pull requests and let's go create a new pull request And we'll say create pull request and create pull request. And if we now go back over to Jira and go to applications and go to DVCS accounts and go back to our My Shuttle repository. Well, I didn't want to go to the repository, my bad. What I want to do is come over here and tell it to sync. There he goes. You can see it's syncing. It just synced. And now if I come back over and refresh my Scrum 5 work item. Oh, wrong place. Let's go projects. Scrum. Scrum 5. Do a refresh just because we can. What we'll see now is we've got three commits because there's the merge commit that happened and there's my more changes that just happened. If I go to pull request, we can see we have one open pull request, but we can also see the merged pull request that's there as well, as well as link, links to the comments. And there you go. Now there's some other things you can do with um, the smart commits, you can, I think you can include keywords and have it like, you know, move your work items from open to closed, things like that. But this shows you the basics of how you go about integrating Jira Data Center on prem with GitHub Enterprise Cloud or Enterprise Managed Users. Remember, this scenario was your Jira is not externally accessible. If your Jira was externally accessible, then you could come into 
your repository and add webhooks to where when I made that commit, it automatically updates Jira versus having to wait for Jira to pull. Yeah.